Hi everyone, this is Jared Beeman. I'm an application specialist for technical structures at Trimble. And today we're gonna to be reviewing the new tilt-up role from the Tuckle Warehouse and how you can start using um, that role specifically on your tilt-up projects. Once you download that from the warehouse, you're gonna see the Imperial tilt-up concrete contractor role here. And that's gonna conclude all of the components, attributes, drawing settings that are specifically to be used on tilt-up structures. So we'll go ahead and start that up and we're gonna open up a new model and then take a look at some of the features. I'm gonna go through the model and point out some of the important attributes or default settings that are applied with this role. Now for modeling panels, always use wall layout under the panel dropdown. Now the wall panels that it creates is no different than a regular panel part. This tool is just going to allow us to split up the panels very easily, um, add seams and connections. The default setting is already preset to have the correct attributes, so it will meet all of our filter rules. And you can also load up the insulated panel if you just want to add or apply that property so it's got the inside layer, outside layer, and insulation. Over in the component catalog in the concrete and walls section, here's all the tools that can be used for the wall layout plugin. I'll start out with the elementation. Again, these all have nice standard defaults, so they will all work right away. So I can just select on one panel or multiple panels and just create those selected seams and we can choose either the length or number of panels that we want or even define the panel length based off of the weight of the panel that you're trying to achieve. The default setting for the geometry detailing strip is once we highlight on our wall panel and just define two points for that reveal. It'll automatically apply that shape and if I double click on this um, you can either create the part or just the cut. The part is going to be useful on the drawing side. If you just want to have a bounding box representation, it can really help with the line work. Um, and you can turn that on and off with this option here. And if you need to add uh, multiple mock joints, um, then you can just type in a distance list in that box right here. Now we're just going to do a quick overview. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on the other wall layout tools, but I want to take a look at the component section with this tilt-up group that has been added here. There are a couple different tools for concrete details. This could be an easier way to add the reveals out, so then I can just go and click on the wall panels um, and add those out really quickly. I'm going to undo. There's also a tool here to add openings. So I can click on a panel and let's load up the dialog here. So we can choose up to four openings. You can turn them on and off depending on how much or how many you want. There's a table defining the typical sizes of openings that you might want to pick from. Um, the reason it's been set up like this is so you can just pick how many of a certain type of opening that you have, um, or maybe you have two garage doors or two regular doors that you want to use. That's why it's set up like this. So if I have a garage door, which is my type A, and then I have another one that's B, or let's say I have two garage doors, they're both A. And then we can choose the X and Y location or the distance um, from the end and then the distance from the bottom of the panel. Under the embed section, there are several different custom parts we have here. Um, an insert, an embed angle, an embed plate, um, and a couple lifting accessories here. So for those five components, these are just placed with two points. So you can freely place those. What you have to do after though, if you do place these manually, you have to add them or assign them to the assembly afterwards because they're not automatically added to that cast unit. Now with these other components, they are automatically added for these details or connections. I'm just going to take a look at a couple different ones here, like this foundation one. 
Um, so I can just select on my panel and click where I want that to be located. So I select the panel on one point. Some of these just might require you to pick an object and then that's it. So if I double click on the embed array that I've added out here, um, we can enter in the dimension from the bottom, the edge distance, the number of embeds that you want, what the width and height and depth of that joist pocket are. Um, another quick example I'll show is a connection. We can select on those two parts and through the dialog then you can you know define the the size of all of the um, pieces or plates or angles that are being added um, what the stud sizes and lengths and spacings are and then where those are located vertically at the corner so if the first embed is at five feet and then i have two at six foot spacing i can just enter that in now, if we take a look at the assembly structure of this panel, now it's just going to be getting that plate cast with it. And if we look at this other one, that also has its opposite side plates attached, and then the red angles are going to be field welded, so they are not assigned to those cast units. And there's different types for various types of conditions. Um, so there's just a, you know, a single embed pocket you could place or a single embed plate. There is a connection for, um, for joists that are landing at the gap or where the panels are connecting. Um, there's a similar one to where instead of adding it automatically at the top, um, you just define the vertical distance up to the embed here. Now I'll give a short overview of some of the important features with drawings. Um, so I'm just going to make a drawing of this panel. It's got some angle embeds, um, some different brace inserts, um, as well as uh, erection inserts here and some base plates. So let's go ahead and change to our assembly icon. I can select on that panel. I'll go to create drawings, cast unit drawing, a number. Now, if I go and open up that drawing, the standard setting is just going to make an 8.5 by 11 uh, with a bill of materials. And then just a single view with the dimensions for concrete and embeds and inserts. So this is a pretty condensed view. You know, you're not always just going to have a single view. Uh, so there are some preloaded options um, from the cast unit drawings menu. If I go to the layout tab, there's a couple different title blocks. So you can choose from an 8.5 by 11 or 11 by 17. There's also a multi sheet. Creating drawings in this type of way can save you from having to produce a lot of drawings inside of Tecla. So we could just have this one drawing sheet. It's actually going to print out two 8.5 by 11 sheets. So I can go to the view creation. I can add in another view here. Um, let's do front as well, and I have a setting for detailing the concrete or dimensioning the concrete, and then another one focusing on the hardware. So I'll just go ahead and modify it, and that'll recreate the drawing. And I can just slide this view down. So with just a few clicks, you can get to a deliverable you know, looking pretty presentable. Of course, you're going to need to customize um, the dimensioning styles and that sort of thing, but this is really just to give you a, a good head start. Now, when we go to print with a drawing set up like this, you'll just choose print on multiple sheets. And I have my paper size selected. So now when this prints out, I've got my two eight and a half by 11s together. That concludes the concept for this presentation. Please stay tuned to our channel for more videos on this topic. And if you have any questions, please reach out to your local Tecla support.